I'm not sure how this one's going to come out. Uh, it's a painting I, I did a long time ago. I did it in acrylic with texture paste and I sold it last year. Um, at Denby's, this is a, a lovely wine growing part of uh, the Surrey Hills, Dorking. Um, so we've got some beech type trees with lovely ivy clad and distance, distant Surrey Hills here. This, this uh, track, this rough track here, a bit of reflection in after the rain. I don't know how it will work in a watercolour, I've not tried it. But as a subject, it was ideal for, for the fineness of stippling with, uh, with uh, uh, acrylic. So I'll have a go at it and see how we get on. I'll have to uh, move the computer. I don't know, if, I haven't got any, trial, any uh, digital photographs of this. So we'll have to make do with older uh, analogue. I haven't even got the uh, the, orig the original uh, negative for it, but nevertheless, we'll uh, just use it. We're not going to copy it literally. The usual palette of uh, of lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin, light red, burnt umber. Oh, I'll put the light on. As if that, that's it. If that makes any difference. Uh, it's a very dull day, very rainy. Uh, burnt umber here and Payne's grey. The, the burnt umber is shrinking, it seems to be drying, so I'll, I'll have to just see if I can glue it back with some water in there. I'll fill it with some burnt umber later. Right, okay. So, to start off, uh, wet the paper all over. When I did this original painting, I didn't work from anything. I just made it up as I went along. But of course, with oil and acrylic, you can change at any stage, especially with acrylic. It's so quick. It's a lovely medium, odour-free, unlike oils, which can be quite toxic, especially when you get older and you've done a lot of it. Breathing in paraffin. Paraffin, if you're interested, is a very good brush cleaner and it keeps bristle brushes soft whereas white spirit, the usual, makes them brittle but I haven't done oil paint since I started these watercolours um, back in, in December and, and these, these demos uh, in January but I'm enjoying working with watercolour I think I'm slowly improving with the techniques again having not done it for so long right, uh, we'll We'll invent a bit of a sky, we'll use some aliz alizarin, I don't use a lot of alizarin, but certainly with the, the yellows and it's a great mixer for those colours. So, so we'll drop in some raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of alizarin, just to get that coming in there, and some nice Light. I want that nice and light on that horizon there. So just get that stoking in. And now I've put some nice dark clouds. I always use umber, not umber, sorry, ultramarine and light red. Whatever gives you the colour you want. I'm just, it's just what I do. And I make up these, these rules. And then next week I've changed, I've done something else. So I've just streak that in there. That coming down. Get it smaller and, and weaker as they come down. Oh, look at that up there. I'm not a lover of, of lifting out with uh, tissues, but there's nothing to stop you doing it and experimenting with it. And I'm, it's just that I'm not really used to doing it. Stephen Cronin on his uh, lovely website, he, he, he uses it quite a lot. But it's a technique that I'm not really happy with. No, it's just, I'm just inventing this sky here just to try and make it a bit interesting. And they come down. Right, now we're going to leave that, I'll probably... Yeah, that, that'll all dry lighter. 
and I was I was busy doing this bit up the top here, wasn't I? While the paper is in this this state, nice and wet, you can you can do a lot of painting into it. But once it starts to dry like that, you have to be very very careful because it'll go cauliflowering. So the next thing we're going to put in is some is some bluish background. I'll just just lift out that there. I hope that doesn't go cauliflower flowery. No, no, there's going to be a sort of shrubby, shrubby bushes and stuff there. And here we'll just put in a light, a light bluey, bluey background. Just coming across here, a lot of it's going to be persuaded. So these represent the Surrey Hills. You've got Box Hill, Leith Hill. Sheer, Gomshaw, Ranley Common, lovely pubs. Used to do a lot of walking in this area, although this doesn't exist, this is a fantasy. But it's where I say it is. I will just a bit of undulation there just to show her. These lovely gentle rolling hills. Yeah. I want to put in some lighter yellow there. I don't, it won't register probably, but well, it might do. Just coming across here. Right. Some sins on there. Oh, across there. We've got a path coming across here. I'll wait till the painting is dry to do that. So I'll put some darker greens in the, in the base of that. Oops. Careful as we go. Don't overdo this. Right. It's like sort of a gap through there with this path. Yes. Okay, now we'll commence over the other side. Must be the yellow there. A little bush there. And then that will be that for there. I think so now we can go in with with our other colours now for that shrubby stuff here. rich greens and reds and Got the trees coming up in this lot. So these are just the just the general shabbiness of the area. I don't want to come down too low with this because <coughs> I've got some, some sky colour in there to show it. after the storm, it's what we can call it. After the storm, storm Surrey Hills. Right. When the brush starts to split, just bring it back together again. With some clean water, a bit of clean water. Paper's drying, drying off now, so let's put that in there. And that there goes across there. Alright, bring that coming down there. Alright, we have a few little bits in there. I need to re-clip it. It's grind it. Oh, it's on flat again. How are we doing? Yeah, that's looking alright. Uh, right, uh, yeah. Right, well, that's drying. We can texture a bit of this foreground now so we'll have some nice 
Which greens? Uh, no, I won't. I won't. I'll put the uh, the path in. So, a bit of light red. I'm not going to elaborate this. I'm just going to bung it in. Coming across there. Leaving some. Uh, right, that, that'll do. Now we can put the greens in. Uh, before I do, I'm going to put the blues in. Mimic the sky in there. That light, quite light. Do you want me to brush a bit? That's right. Uh, although I haven't put any blue up there, I'm going to put some in there. Well, we've got nice, uh, nice colours there, so we'll uh, put them in as well. Just to show, this is the the puddle puddles. Put them in there. It's no good putting blue in, really, is it? Because there's no blue above it. No, we'll just put it down there. This will look lighter when I put the darks in around it, so they're coming down there. Alright, okay. A bit of a, a bit of a grey there, we can put in some some puddle stuff in. in there. Alright. So I'm gonna come across there. This room is reflecting above there. The ruts. Right, this is the reflection. Uh, a bit of dark there. And into that, I can put the reflection of those three trees or two trees. Now we've got some lovely, lovely ivy. My cloth is soaking wet, and I let go of my jeans, and, and all the, uh, the colours of previous paintings goes through. I get told off. Right, okay. Let's put in some some nice, rich, dark greens for ivy. Use a bit of. Bit of red in there, bit of Payne's grey, lots of yellow. And um, we'll, we'll just have these coming up here. Dry the brush a bit. You do that, we really need to, to dry off your brush on a piece of dry cloth. Top in to your semi dry palette and just make them in. And then one coming up here. And another one coming up there. And we'll make one of them bigger than the others, quite a lot bigger, and going right up into the canopy with the. Uh, with the ivy. Right. This one quite a bit bigger. Going up following some branches which we haven't put in. Right, and then some more odds and ends there. Yeah. 
to some scrubs, chubby growth of foliage. Right, I'll just put in some chunks there, some burnt umber, a bit of bit of blue, bit of black, bit of, bit of everything there really. Just don't know to come out there. brush is split so I'm just trying to bring it, bring it back together again. Uh, these come out here. Right up there. Bit of rigor. You need your rigor wet when you do this. I'm going to go over these, this IV a bit more. Isn't it? Not really uh, registered. The, the, the chunks are too strong, but I've got to put them in to get some dark for the ivy. Right. I prefer the, uh, the hake to fill this really. The rigger tends to be a little bit mechanical for me, I'm not a master of using it I have to say. But you, you have to make the marks how you, how you can best do them. This is a much more dry brushy impressionist effect. And you're going to cover up the, the ends of these trees, branches with twigs and some sort of canopy. Uh, well, we can have uh, some bits and pieces coming up in here. Can you hear the rain? Now this, the tree on here is is further away, so that's more blue. So we're making more blue. Just coming out here. Very delicate this. Do it. I'll have some some more background ones there. Right now, with a bit of uh, the lizard mixed in with the blue, I'm going to just put in some extra tr trunks behind there. You show more of a copse sort of thing, but being blue, they should look a bit more distant. Too close. Come up there. Right, let's let that dry. Now I'm going to use some nice blue clean brush. 
in this room, ultramarine, fairly dry brush. And then just, just put in the, in the back, background. Give an, hopefully give an impression of a bit of depth behind there. And some of the uh, twigs going backwards behind the 3D. Go over that with some darker stuff, no worries. Now we've we'll just put a canopy on this here. sorting yourself out so I'm going to start doing the texturing on here so we want uh, lots of variety in this greens umbers siennas for a kitchen sink in it that's why not really? nice and light yellows coming towards us To vary the colours in this. Nice and light yellow. Okay, now let's get some yellow ochres and um, yellow ochre, we'll see what I mean, and red in there. Warm it up a little bit. Yeah. Merge a bit. And the same here. Uh, yellows. Don't really leave too many highlights on this video. They do tend to, to sink cry out a bit. Now I'm going to leave, leave some of that showing. I'll put some darks in there for the reflections of the ivy covered trees. Uh, all right, so I'm going to just go in for some heavier stuff here. Muddy. Hmm. Right, not sure about that. Might look okay once it's dried off a bit. Right, this is our foreground. Brushes split. I hope this doesn't go muddy. Always a great danger. That's it. I want to show some ruts in there. It's about variety and of colour against colour, lights against darks. You don't always pull it off. But after an overall effect. Now, I want to put in these here. I'm going to have to do some more texturing on top of that. It's gone a little bit, a bit muddy. 
Right, so with my hake, corner of the hake, nice and dark. It's not really very sure I've done too dark there. Never mind. And we'll just have you just showing through there. What does, that, what does that look like? Oh. Right. I want to put some uh, the tops on these now. Burnt umber and uh, and grey, paint grey. Just a bit, bit of dark green on this here. Put a little bit of really dark, dark on there. And that dry a bit. I, did, I got carried away with this and I forgot to leave the sky colour showing, however, move the signature on there I think. Ah, right, I'll put that in a mount, let's see how that goes. It doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, I've got my darks coming through here, the path here, no figures on this one, but I think we'll let that go. I think that's not, not too bad. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.